Thank you for joining us. I am Ayola Kasim. Today we open S file and flip to the chapter on sustainable development goals. That will be the new buzzword as the focus changes from the Millennium Development Goals after 2015. One of the main outcomes of the Rio Plus 20 conference in 2012 was the agreement by member states to launch a process to develop a set of sustainable development goals, otherwise known as SDGs, which will build upon the MDGs and converge with the post-2015 development agenda. It was decided to establish an inclusive and transparent intergovernmental process open to all stakeholders with a view to developing global sustainable development goals to be agreed by the United Nations General Assembly. So what are these SDGs and what do they stand for? Our focus today on SFAO. Welcome to the program. President of the 68th session of the General Assembly. World leaders have called President for an ambitious long-term sustainability agenda to succeed the MDGs. We know that achievements have been uneven between goals among and within regions and countries and between population groups. For the most marginalized and vulnerable in society, social exclusion and discrimination are among the greatest obstacles uh, to progress. Unless these imbalances are addressed through bolder and more focused interventions, some targets will not be met. The new agenda must address the unfinished business of the MDGs, beginning with the eradication of extreme poverty. Building on the successes of the MDGs, it will also need to address pressing global sustainable development challenges like environmental degradation and promote sustained and inclusive economic growth in poor countries if poverty eradication is to be irreversible. We learned with the MDGs that working in silos is not good. The MDGs had poverty here, health there, water there, environment over here. And um, what we learned after 15 years is that in fact, we may have ended up achieving some of those goals at the expense of the others. Now that's not very good, is it? But that shows you the inherent trade-offs that of course exist in this world. Diplomats passed the final document outlining the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals on the 19th of July 2014, after 29 hours of negotiating. The text, pieced together by representatives from 30 countries, will be passed on to the United Nations for discussions among all member states at the General Assembly in September. The set of goals focuses on economic, social, and environmental dimensions to improve people's lives and protect the planet for future generations. In Rio Plus 22 years ago, when the nations came together to agree, to agree on sustainable development goals, um, they said they want the sustainable goal, development goals to be ambitious, transformational, which to many meant no longer business as usual, we've got to really change things before we can achieve something, and that they should balance the social agenda, the economic agenda, and the environmental agenda. Now, the social agenda is very much what the MDGs were focusing on, health, education, poverty. The economic agenda, growth, employment, industrialization, infrastructure, and the environmental agenda, of course. The proposals contains 17 goals with 169 targets, covering a broad range of sustainable development issues. The first goal aims at ending poverty in all its forms everywhere. The second hopes to end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture, Goal three is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Goal four, to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. The fifth goal says to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Six, ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. 
Code 7 ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. The eighth goal proposes to promote inclusive and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work for all. Goal 9, build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation. The tenth goal is reduce equality within and among countries. Goal 11, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Goal 12, ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. Goal 13 says, take urgent action to combat climate change and its impact. Goal 14, conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. While Goal 15 says, protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably manage forests, combat desertification, and halt and reverse land degradation, and halt biodiversity loss. Goal 16 focuses on the promotion of peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. And goal 17 is to strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. Really, there's three key elements that we need to achieve with these sustainable development goals. One is that we should leave no one behind. What does that mean? That means that there must be, we must all agree, on a minimum standard of living that everybody is entitled to. And this is not just income, this is also the way we live. It's a clean environment, it's access to basic services, it's good governance, it's social protection. So leaving no one behind, one key element of this future agenda. The second one is to live within our means. Now, what does that mean? Let me unpack that one, because that's pretty complex. You may have heard about some scientists talking about planetary boundaries, that we have exceeded, particularly the one on biodiversity, on ecosystems, that we have degraded our planet. The capacity of the planet is starting to look pretty shaky. Um, some prefer to call it the safe operating space. Can we stay within the safe operating space of this planet? But we have achieved this, this degradation because of the current uh, modes of production that we have, because of the way we have seen very fast economic growth, because of the way some of our actions have led to further degradation of the environment. And then the third element is, all right, uh, we want to leave no one behind. We want to achieve prosperity while staying within our our planetary uh, capacity, but today's planetary capacity is actually a degraded capacity. We have polluted waters, we have polluted oceans, we have polluted lands. We have degraded product lands who's, who are no longer as productive as they were before. So in a sense, the pie has already shrunk and we're going to be competing for a smaller and smaller pieces of this pie. We have the technologies today to restore. We have the technologies today to clean the pollution. And we have technologies today to, in fact, leave a legacy for our children. That's a lot better than today. So three key elements, leave no one behind, live within our means, and leave something behind, something good behind for future generations. Studies show that environmental factors, while often not the sole cause of violent conflict, can spark violence and contribute to chronic instability and unrest if not properly managed. At least 40% of all violent conflicts in the last 60 years have been linked to natural resources. This is said to worsen as climate change and more frequent natural disasters are expected to increase the risk of such conflict by degrading the available resource base. Low-income countries, which are largely dependent on natural resources, will be worst affected. These economies are 10 times more likely 
than other developing countries to experience civil war and significantly slower economic growth than similar countries without major natural resources. Whether or not the document will contain a goal dedicated to climate change has concerned some countries and civil society groups, while countries such as France, Peru, Mexico, and Bangladesh have supported the inclusion of a goal on global warming. Others, including China and India, have rejected these calls. Supporters say that without a dedicated goal on climate change, sustainable development more widely would be impossible. How do you negotiate a fair deal when a third of the world has already taken a lot of the stuff and now is getting scared about not having it anymore and the other two thirds would like to have the same but have no chance to have the same? That's the heart of the sustainable development agenda of the United Nations today. Trying to find a way in which 7 billion people can find a new compact for the future, that remains a fundamental principle of environmental sustainability. But understanding how nature and our environment will actually sustain development in the future. When you talk about more jobs, more power, more transport, more energy, more food, for more people with higher living standards, you're essentially talking about environment and the natural resource base of this planet and the relation between people and nature or between environment and the economy. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, meanwhile, has warned that the SDGs will fail unless governments and businesses find an extra $2.5 trillion a year to support them. In the World Investment Report of 2014, launched in June, it was said that between $3.3 trillion and $4.5 trillion will be needed in the developing world to deliver the goals. Current investment in these sectors is around $1.4 trillion, creating an average investment gap of about $2.5 trillion. In 2012, South-South trade reached $4.7 trillion. This represents a very, very substantial expansion, the fastest growing um, trade uh, segments around the world. And a very substantial part of this is accounted for by uh, environmental goods. And we see a kind of mutually reinforcing relationship here that uh, simplification of trading procedures, investment in infrastructure, reduction of the cost of cross-border trade and regional integration are abated by and they also facilitate increased trade in environmental goods. To a lot of the rural communities, this makes a fundamental difference. The possibility of access to light in a viable way without destruction of the biomass represents an opportunity for more productive engagement with regional and national trade. And so we see a direct link between increasing cross-border south-south trade and, and, and enhanced livelihoods and inclusion, particularly for the rural poor and most vulnerable. The World Investment Report argues that whilst public sector contributions remain indispensable, they're likely to be insufficient to meet demands across all SDG-related sectors. As a result, private sector contributions through both good governance in business practices and investments in sustainable development are described as critical. While UNCTAD acknowledges that bridging the funding may seem like a daunting task, it is achievable and the potential for increased private sector and investment contribution is significant. In order to close the funding gap, the report argues that development at a global level is required. In addition, national policymakers should set investment targets and establish a global multi-stakeholder platform on investing in the SDGs. The goal on climate change, as it currently stands, requires countries to strengthen their resilience to climate 